Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to Minecraft. Um, so, this episode I did say that I was going to go over everything that's left on the ground for my side, which involves the castle, the dealership, the tank repair shop, and the ruin. So, let's head right on over to... I don't know. Let's start with the military dealership, because I think it makes the most sense, because then you'll know exactly what built, what vehicle is which. But I do have another... Buschenfeder, which is, um, well, obviously this. Um, but let's start up with, well, let's start up with the dealership. Once again, it's the same dealership as you've seen for the race car and for the nuclear cars. Um, it's the smallest one of the lot, but it's built in exactly the same way. You've got redstone and quartz checkered flooring. You've got a chest there which contains a spare version of this book. Um, and then it's got, you know, the three high glass and then a single row of dark prismarine plus the um, wooden beams um, plus the overhang because, you know, overhangs are good. So let's start off here with the nuclear tank and, you know, tanks such as Fury, people people generally get attached to their tanks, especially people in the military. People in the military tend to get attached to their tanks and so they write a name on the barrel. So I decided to take up that tradition and name them all nuclear themed. So I, the first tank name that I came up with was Nuclear Nelly. Because, I don't know, because generally, because generally you always, they always start with the same letter. You always have a name and then something before or after it. Um, so I came up with Nuclear Nelly just because why not. So here is your basic tank. Um, you've got minecarts to act as the tracks because, well, what else? And then down the side here you've got um, ladders to act as the uh, track going down. Unfortunately there is no way of actually getting something which slopes like that because it wouldn't make sense, so unfortunately we have to do with this. But these are the two, well, this would be the driving wheel, this would be the idler wheel up the top, and then these would be the road wheels down the bottom. Um, then you've got the main body of the uh, tank is is the green here. Um, this is supposed to be the driver's viewport. Um, don't worry that it's not proportionate. Um, this is the most proportionate I, that I could make it, even though you couldn't fit a person in there unless you were like lying down all the time. This is the turret traverse. I know that's I know that it's like right exposed at the front, but turret. Um, in order to incorporate this massive nuclear engine at the back here, which has got caution high rads written on it, because in the military we have to be very cautious. So you've got um, the underlay anti mine protection, I'll call it, which is um, this uh, these stone half slabs. Um, but yeah, so they're underneath just to make it look nicer, and then you've got, of course, the white uh, nuclear protection right there, as you get around every nuclear engine in, in on my side of the line. Um, then you've got, obviously, the main engine block right there. This is the turret, so you've got the main gun out the front here. It would most likely be a 90 or something millimeter gun. Um, then you've got... Well, this is just to cover up the fact that this is just a redstone block. I think it looks it looks the best, really, um, I think, to just add that there. And then it's a three long barrel, four if you include that. And just to make the barrel look different, I decided to use um, chiseled red sta sandstone. Um, although, does it have a massively long name in German? Indeed it does. Oh, God. Give me a bit of water, Sandstein. Alrighty then, but either way, it's chiselled red sandstone. Um, and then you've got the hatch at the top to actually enter and exit the vehicle. You've got um, this sloping back turret, to, just to make it look nicer. You've got um, the main turret where it sort of slopes outwards in, onto the main turret, which is here. You've got the gunner's viewport right there. Um, USA, obviously. Um, and then it sort of slopes back to make it look nice, and then at the top it slopes back up to a sort of rounded top. Um, I sort of mo tried to model the turrets on something like the M103 or the M60 or something like that, so either way, there's the turret. You can actually get in here, not that you have much room, but either way you can get in here and then you can sort of just sit in the tank, not that you have any view, but yeah, it's not proportionate, but then 
tanks are weird. Um, so there's the tank, there's the specification developed in 1955, never released because who wants to ha have a mini nuclear bomb following them into battle? Or indeed, who wants to be riding with a mil with a miniature nuclear bomb? Um, but it has a top speed of 30 kilometers an hour. Not quick, I know. 0 to 60 in 8 seconds, made in the USA. Other tank names, and then I just came up with a couple of them. Nuknate, Atomic Allison, Radioactive Pete. Um, then, what's the next one? It's this thing. So... Obviously, it's a six-wheeled uh, reconnaissance vehicle. You've got um, just a ladder at the front, just because it looked like a grill. Not that you would need a grill, because once again, nuclear engine at the back. Um, only too high, only too wide, um, or too too high, one wide. Um, so it's a two by one pillar, basically. What I've done there for the chiselled chiselled stone brick. Once again, warning: high rad level on the engine there. Um, then you've got the nuclear protecting around here. Um, yes, again, you've got the uh, six wheels. There's where you would uh, look out with your reinforced glass. You've got then you've got a machine gun at the top here. Um, obviously not loaded, but you would come in here. You could, you know, sit in your re reconnaissance here. Don't worry about the fact that you can see the nuclear engine there. It's perfectly safe. Um, but yeah, so then you you can just sort of sit up here. You can machine gun things even though it opens up the trap door, but never mind. So, here's the Scout vehicle, developed in 1954, re never released, top speed of 80 km an hour, 0 to 60 in 6 seconds, made in the USA. Other vehicle names, Super Power Scout, unbeatable U62, pleasing PU64, because these are two atomic elements, you've got uranium and plutonium, rapid rads, rapid reactor, and then I've got written on here, Radical Recce, because why not? Um, and, oh yes, uh, the tank is evaluated at 4 million, this thing is evaluated at 1.2 million, so, you know, tank for 4, this thing for 1.2. Then you've got this little thing, which is, um, there you go, the Light Scout Nuclear. Um, so that's this thing, two-wheeled, tiny engine at the back, very lightweight, warning, radiation. Um, you've got, again, a light machine gun at the top. You've got, um, I suppose you could have three people in there if you wanted. You could probably fit about three people in there if you would have one person there, one person there, one person there. You would have a driver and two lookouts, perhaps. I don't know. But once again, you can get in here. Don't worry about the engine. Perfectly safe. Um, and then, yeah, you can come out here, and then you've got the light machine gun here to... Yeah, just ting off some heavy armour, perhaps, and then you just got that little thing there. Um, so, there you go, developed 53. This thing was actually released in 55. Um, top speed of 100 kilometers per hour, because, again, light scout nuclear. 0 to 60, 5.2, made in the USA. And then, the other vehicle that's on there is actually in here, which is the... Um, which is the uh, Jeep, because there was actually a challenge to build a Jeep because I figured that we were making a farm. This was around the same time that I actually added farm to the list of challenges. So we needed a farm. What do you generally find on farms? A jeep, because they're handy, mobile, multi-purpose. And so I thought, we need to create a jeep. I'll put jeep as a challenge. So there we go. Um, so as you can see, most of these vehicles have got USA on them, and they're in US Army green. Um, this has actually got headlights, obviously, because it's only a jeep. Um, but again, a light machine gun at the top here, um, on a um, on one of those basically sticks that has a ball joint at the end, so that you can machine gun things. That's pretty much what you have there. Um, but again, you can take it off and just use it as a regular transport jeep or whatever. You've got seats here. This would be the steering wheel. You've got um, the engine at the front here. Yeah, you know, you've seen it on the farm. In, just in different colours, but this is the military version of it. So it has the light machine gun at the front, or at the top of the vehicle. Um, headlights here, you know, your small engine, yeah, this is your basic thing. It's evaluated at 600,000, um, if I get all the details and specifications of it here. The, it's a nuclear jeep, developed in 51, released in 54, top speed of 120, 0 to 65.6, .6, made in the USA, um, and that's pretty much it. Um, 
Of course, it doesn't get a name. Neither does neither does the Light Scout, um, the um, Light Scout Nuclear or whatever it is. <laughs> I've forgotten the name of this thing already. But this thing's only evaluated at 450,000, so it doesn't get a name. This thing does because it's sort of like your main reconnaissance branch of what the military would probably use, and then of course tanks always get it. So then we move on to the tank destroyer, which is this behemoth over here. So this has actually got um, track covering side skirts right here. Um, these anvils just to make it look nicer, it's like suspension or something. Then you've got uh, the road wheels down here, you've got the driving wheel and the idler. Um, yeah, you could have those either way around to be honest. Um, but you've got this massive engine at the back. It's um, 6x2 and it's too deep. It's a very big, powerful nuclear engine back here, which has caution nuclear radiation, so that you know to be careful. Um, but once again, ladders here to show the exposed tracks as they go around the idler. Or, well, either way, you could have the idler there, you could have the drive wheel there, you could have it vice versa, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so you've just got basic side skirts there. Written on there, USA, you've got the big uh, box at the front here. This is for the gun. Uh, that's for the driver, I think. That's for the gunner. Um, so it's basically a chassis with a box on top, as are most fixed gun tank destroyers. But as you can see, it's got a five long barrel, six if you count the end. Um, probably a 120 millimeter gun, perhaps. Um, again, tank destroyers like regular tanks get names. So this has got hidden bomb. Um, and then you can actually get inside here, much more spacious because it's basically a big box, fixed gun tank destroyer for you. But so yeah, you've got a lot of space in here. Um, you've got this little thing up here. I probably could add a machine gun up here, just put a um, put a dispenser there, yeah, perhaps. But so there's that. Um, if I get it up here, tank de tank destroyer nuclear. Except I spell nuclear wrong. I just realised that. Developed in '55, never released. Top speed of 14 kilometers an hour. It's basically the TOG 2 speed, zero to 14 because it doesn't get to 60 uh, in seven seconds. Um, so it's a big, powerful engine, but it's a big, heavy vehicle. Um, other tank destroyer names: atomic bomb, the bomb, silent a bomb. See the trend here? Bomb. <laughs> that, that's all I could think of. Because I don't know big gun. Um, but that thing was evaluated at um, 10 million. So, yeah. Nice, big, expensive tank. Um, then you've got this, which is... Uh, sorry about that. I had to pause it there quickly. But anyway, this thing is... Um, well, I needed a truck because I realised I don't actually have any sort of transport trucks to transport troops, you know, rations, munitions, anything, you know, that general purpose trucks are used for. So this thing was evaluated at 750,000 nanoblocks. Um, it's got your basic engine at the front here. You've got two, um, the two headlights at the front. You've got your um, I was about to say cockpit there, but it's, of course, not a cockpit. Um, yeah, excuse me. You've got um, your thingy there. I've forgotten, <laughs> I've forgotten the name again, but uh, lots of USA written on it. Um, you've got its uh, six wheels, because you've got the two, two driving wheels at the back, then you've got the uh, steering wheels at the front. Then you've got a uh, nice US Army olive grey, because... Uh, olive grey, olive green, because, you know. Um, and then this is supposed to be a canvas cover. Um, so you've got the canvas cover here, you've got the door to enter here to actually get things in and out. Um, not very big space, but once again, these are the thinnest walls that you can make. Um, I mean, if I could, then I would have very thin walls and you would actually have a lot of space in here, as, would, as you would with the tank, or indeed anything. Um, but of course, this being vanilla Minecraft, yeah, you can't do that. But So you've got a tarpaulin cover, which can be taken down if you need to sort of overload things, but I just had it with the tarpaulin cover up so that you knew what it would look like. Um, and yeah, that's the basics of that, really. There's nothing more to it. Developed 1950, released 52. It's a truck. You can't really have too much development of it on it. But it's the nuclear transport. 
Uh, top speed of 100. Pretty fast truck, apparently. Um, 0 to 60, 5.6, made in the USA. Um, so, yeah, that's all of the military vehicles. Um, and the reason I went over these first is because all of these contain the same vehicles. All of these other, all these other things that I'm going to be going over. But um, before we head to the castle, because I'm sure you're all very eager to see the castle, so I'm going to keep you waiting, um, unless you just skip to the castle part of this video, which you probably will. But that's if anyone actually watches these, which I doubt they will. Um, but as you can see, the road actually comes down here, leads past. It separates off so that you go down here and then you can head to a different city. But if you head off down here, you actually get to the well tank hangar first off right there. And then over here you also have the tank repair shop. Don't mind the bunny. So this tank repair shop, or this tank hangar even, was um, evaluated at 5 million. So this has got a elongated um, overhang, really. Then it's got these two massive doors uh, at the front here, and the crews can get in and out of here um, through the double iron doors here. They can also uh, get through to each other's hangars if they need to, you know, have immediate work done on a vehicle. But so you've got two tanks in here. You've got Ghoulish Gill. I don't know, just came up with that. Um, but, you know, you've seen the tank before, but what you've got here is you've got sea lanterns at the top, you've got the bracing beam across, you also have um, a very nice um, redstone and quartz checkered flooring. Coming through here to the next tank, um, we've got in here, you've got Radburn, you know, because there's a name called Radburn. You can have Radburn as a name, but then you've also got Rad as in Radiation Burn. You know, you see why I did that? No. Okay. Um, but, yeah, so in order to store the tanks, many tanks will just traverse the turret 180 and have the gun sticking over the back of the hull to save space, because who wants a massively long gun sticking out the front of their tank when they can just turn it around, save space, to fit it into a hangar? Yeah, makes perfect sense, so... So yeah, you've got the hangar, the, you've got the uh, tank facing backwards, sorry, um, and then you've got the same the same thing in either way. It's only a two-slot bay, but I couldn't be bothered to make any more tanks to fill the bays. Um, and then if we come over here, this is the tank repair shop, and it's basically um, a supersized version of the car repair shop. That's in effect what you've got here. Um, so it's been evaluated at 12 million, and... Um, to show that it is indeed a tank repair shop, you've got um, a couple of wheels being re being worked on there. You also have the front idler slash drive wheel, depends on which way you want to draw it, um, with the track coming off here and then it's just sort of draping off here. Um, on on the flooring, of course, you've got um, redstone and quartz checkered flooring. Ah, excuse me. You've got the um, vehicle inspection bay down here. You also have the hydraulic rams, which lift up the... Um, which lift up this bit um, t to actually raise the tank up so you can get underneath it to inspect it. But the engine has been removed um, to be worked on, which is why there's just this big slot cut in the back here, because that is where the engine would go. But one set of tracks has been left on. Um, well, one set of... Uh, well, yeah, one set of suspension, sorry, has been left on. The other set has been taken off and is being... the tank is actually being suspended by this. Um, but then you can either get through that door there, or you can get over here, and over here you'd have shelves of WD-40, various tools, etc, etc. You've got two anvils here. Crafting table. Coming along here, this is to actually work on the gun. Um, to show that this is the loading end, this would be the breech block. I've just used a piece of obsidian just to represent the breech block. And because this is a tank going in for overhaul, I decided to um, make the tank as if it's been to the doctors, so the tank, the tank's name is Six Susan, uh, but the tank is be, uh, the gun is being held up by two anvils because why not? They make perfect um, representations of you know hydraulic rams or something to actually hold up the gun. Um, and then in here you've got sort of a miniature version of the of the shelving. So you've got you know your shelving. You also have um, a door through here and through here. You've actually got the turret because if you noticed the turret's been removed from the tank out there. And this is where you would work on the turret. It's not a big space, I know, but 
as you can see, that's where the um, gun would be, right there. Um, being the, it's being held open by a well, it's being held up by an anvil basically. Um, but once again, some more shelving unit. You've got two anvils down there with a crafting table. You've got the, uh, you've got it actually open so that you can actually get down here and um, you know get into the turret to work on the insides of the turret. Um, so yeah, there's that, and then if you head on through here, this massive, you know, iron area. I forgot to add radiation suits. Whoops. Um, I'm sure I won't need it. I'm wearing a full suit of T51B. Um, but if you head into the radiation chamber here, this is where you work on the engine. So here's the big tank engine. Once again, being held up by the two anvils because they make they make really good representations for something that you would hold something up with. So. Yeah, this is all that you really have in here. You've just got a big empty lead lined box with an engine in it. You know. Um and that is it. You know, like I said, it's basically a copy of the car repair shop. That's all it really is. Um so before we head to the castle, we're gonna go to the ruins, I know. I'm leaving you in suspense, aren't I? Um Every time I go, every time I finish, you think, are you going to the castle now? Nah, I'm going over here. So, coming over here, this is the castle ruins. Um, built in the same style as that castle. Um, I know the castle isn't in the best colouring. However, I wanted it to be my side of the line, so to fit with the style, I built it out of quartz and redstone blocks. Um, and I built it in the same way. The bottom layer is redstone, the rest of it is quartz, apart from the uh, top parapets or... Well, yeah, just the parapets, really. Um, or so that you know where a new where a new floor is, because otherwise you would just have a solid wall of quartz, and that would be far too boring to look at. Um, but anyway, so these are the castle ruins. Um, the castle was used by the military, but they abandoned it. It was used as a storeroom, but they decided that they were going to expand operations to the big castle, which meant that they wouldn't need the small out, uh, um, the small outlying um, outpost, which is what this thing is, because basically it was a rounded keep with four walls and four turrets. Um, turrets uh, being a um, replacement word for. Um, towers, which is what some people use. Um, but after the military abandoned this area, they it fell into disrepair, as you can see, and the walls have crumbled, and they just haven't used it. So this thing was evaluated at 50 million nano blocks. Um, in here, you've got a um, nuclear transport truck just rusting away. Most of the olive green paint has gone and been replaced by this. Um, well, it's supposed to be rust. Um, there you go. This brown, uh, this brown stain clay, Gavartoton. In fact, actually, no. This isn't even brown stain. This is just regular um, hardened clay. But yeah, so you've just got this rusting away. Um, to be honest, I should have used brown, um, brown stained clay. I don't know why I didn't. There's the brown stained, and I'm fairly certain I did, but. Maybe I don't know, um, but either way, the headlights have been smashed. Um, you know, headlights are smashed. They're no longer yellow; they're grey because you know it's a smashed headlight. They can't light up anymore. You know, the radi the um, nuclear engine has long since ran out of juice, and it's just rusting away, unused. Um, the hub the hubcaps have rusted away. They're no longer this. Um, they're no longer the stone buttons, they're wooden, just to show that they are rust, because rust usually forms as brown, you know. The USA has been scratched away and rusted off, so that some of them just say US, some of them just say SA, some of them say UA. There's still one USA there. One of the wheels has fallen off and has just rolled sadly away and just fallen on its side and can't get up. So, here's some chests that still remain, some of the... Um, storage space is still remaining here. Just to make it look even more ruined, I've actually used a combination of full blocks, quartz steps, and quartz half slabs, just to make it look that little bit more dilapidated. Excuse me whilst I have a drink of my tea. But, as you can see, there's barely anything left. 
most of the walls have just disappeared. The t um, towers have just collapsed in on themselves. There are still a couple of lights left um, because you would you would walk in, you know, you would have you would have some somebody patrolling around the s around the side maybe. Here is where you would walk in. Actually, no, you would walk in here. Here would be a door, and you'd climb up here. And as you walk in, you'd have a light so that you can actually see, and then you can simply walk up the tower. Um, but you know, the the nice wooden flooring has since been overtaken by grass and moss. The outside has become overgrown. There's only one tower left standing, and that's still partly standing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's no real way of getting up here unless you fly, because, you know, god mode for the win. Um, but, actually, the way that I built this is that I built it completely new, and then I just set off TNT randomly. That's pretty much what I did. I built it, set off TNT, it exploded. What was left, I patched up to make it look like it wasn't just floating blocks, and this is what you got. So, yeah, that's basically the ruins an ex army storehouse that was built in the ruins of a that was built in a castle which they no longer needed and it just wasted away to nothing um but so that's the ruins and now we come to what everyone's been waiting for the actual castle mm. so i've used um packed uh packed dirt or um, this sort of mud and dirt, the same way as I used it for the farm over there um, to show that lots of vehicles have been over here, so they would come through here there would be guards at the top, these are supposed to be coils of rope because these coils of rope would actually raise and lower the um, would raise and lower um, the gate Yes. Um, so you've got a gatehouse at the front here, which is what this is, and then you've got a covered archway leading into the main base So. You would have uh, the portcullis, that was it, that's what I was trying to remember, you would have you have two portcullises, and you would have guards up here, you know, patrolling and things, you also have um, ways up to the top of the towers, as you can see, you can get into both towers here, um, and so you would, you would have people stationed here at all times to open and lower the gate, um, so coming through here, these are two ways of actually raising and lowering, yeah, because you would have to activate both of these on this side to actually raise the first portcullis, and then you would have to activate both of these and there we go activate both of these to get the second portcullis to raise um, and the way that I've tried to show how this would work is that you've got um, two sets of redstone, you've got one redstone up here and the same on the other side to raise the first one and then you've just got this tower up of redstone torches that, um, you know, because with redstone torches, if you place one a block and then another one, the one on top goes off because it's getting a redstone signal from there which causes it to turn off. So when you alternate the signal, this one turns off, this one turns on, and it's a way of making lights or something like that. So, either way, this is how you would um, raise and lower the drawbridge if this was actually a thing, but as it happens, it isn't. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Let me just break through here. There we go, nobody saw anything. The army's not going to shoot me for coming in here. So, you come in here, once again, this this ground has just become so muddy and just packed earth. Mm. And outside here you've got the general's jeep, or just a simple light machine gun jeep. Um, yeah, your basic thing. I, I went over it over there in the uh, military dealership. Come on, fly. There we go. So you've got that, and then coming through here, you've got uh, two tanks parked here. You've got um, Nuclear Natalie, and then you also have Plutonium Peter. Best names. Um, so, yeah, where the tanks have parked, you've just got loads and loads of mud. You've got um, these well-worn tracks where vehicles have just gone around and around the, um, the keep, because, of course, you know, if this was, you know, the 1500s, this place would be perfectly nice and fine, you would just have knights, but of course, being the modern day, things like that aren't a luxury anymore, so 
vehicle tires and things are just going to churn this place up into mud and so you can see exactly where the tire treads have gone and the reason that they're too wide is because the vehicles as you can see by this lorry are only three wide tanks are five wide which is why you've got two sets here these ones would be for the vehicles where the vehicles have gone around and this is for the tanks where the tanks have gone around so yeah there's that so you've got you know your two tanks here you've got plutonium pizza nuclear natalie yeah nuclear natalie so you've got these two tanks here just parked there waiting to defend the defend the uh, castle then here you've got um, quiet boom yeah because you know it's a tank destroyer you'd be sniping people from two kilometers away the first thing they'd know is the boom of their tank it's so the tank fired from so far away that it was quiet before they went boom hence the quiet boom you know it's a tank destroyer pun um, but so yeah you've got this tank destroyer here which is just simply backed into the here um, then you've got two trucks this one of course has got the uh, tarpaulin down because it's unloading a lot of supplies and so lower the tarpaulin you have more access to the supplies so as you can see all the um, chests and crates have just been dumped behind the vehicle to be taken inside to the chef or whatever and then this one is just driving around and you'll notice that I've used redstone blocks at the back and glowstone at the front instead of red and yellow wool that's because this vehicle's driving so when it's driving it has the lights on because well it's handily turned night time so because it's night time it would have its lights on and to show that the lights are on what things emit light well redstone emits light if you hit it that's just the ore but I'm sure these things could work the same way and glowstone just always emits light so I just thought you know we'll have glowstone so that's why you have glowstone and redstone instead of well just to show that the lights are on pretty much um, but there's nothing in the back of this it's just driving a driving around after having unloaded whatever it had then in here you've got one of the uh, reconnaissance vehicles this one is reactive recon yeah um, and I've gone over that, so you don't need to see that. And this is actually entering the castle keep. However, before we do that, what I'm first going to do is just show what the towers are like. So, inside the towers, they're all the same. You come in here, you've got the nice um, dark oak wood flooring. You have got the light, like there was in the ruins. And then you come up here, you've got a way onto here, where you've got um, the battlements. Yeah. So you come onto the battlements, you've got these, you've got um, the parapets and things up here. Well, no, that, that's a parapet. These are, um, what were they called? I remembered them earlier, but I've forgotten. <laughs> God damn it. Um, but either way, there's these. <laughs> there's these things. I suppose they could. They're battlements, yeah, they're just battlements. So you've got them, and then you come to the top of the tower with the parapets. Um, and so you've got that. Um, and these are all the same. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, because there's two either corner. So, yeah, you've got eight for the actual castle wall, and then you've got ten, including the two at the front for the gatehouse. Then you've just got the big keep. Um, and, of course, the keep is taller, so you've got more of a view. You also have a better defensive position because you can actually shoot at stuff outside of the wall from the keep. So it's a fairly defendable location, um, hence why they set, a, set up in the castle. So if you come in here, you've got three different doors that you can take. This one in here heads to a, uh, you know, the ground floor here. Um, this is just a common room, so the crews, after hours, on their free time, whatever, can come in here, they can watch some TV, read some books, whatever, they have got a nice big sofa here so that they can, you know, chat or whatever, you know, watch the news perhaps, maybe. Um, then coming in here you've got the mess hall, which is what the uh, main bottom flooring is, um, so you've got the, you know, you've just got loads of tables here. And then this final door was actually for the cooks to enter here, so you've got some um, furnaces here. You've got the main serving counter, and then you also have um, you also have two of these uh, crafting tables. And yeah, that's about it for the bottom floor. Um, let me just close all the doors because I like having all the doors closed. It's something that I can't 
I hate it when people just leave the doors open, but this is the main tower up. So this is the main way of getting up and down the tower. Um, or up and down the keep even. You can just go up the spiralling staircase. And there is an entrance here from the outside so that you don't have to walk all the way around and head through the keep. You can just enter through the handy door. So coming up here to the first floor, this is the main relaxation room. Um, or well, the main relaxation floor. So you've got three pool tables here. Um, and then through here, I think, there's another pool table, yep. And then through here, you've got the main common room, so you've got two TVs, you also have a whole bunch of books. So, yeah, you've got, you've also got this nice sort of circular, um, you've also got this nice sort of circular um, sofa arrangement, perhaps. Um, and then you also have the basic three-wide sofa there, so... Yeah, you got some TVs, things like that, for the crews to, uh, when they're off duty, whatever, they can come here and they can just chat, play some poo play some. I was about to say a combination of pool and snooker. I was going to say puka, but <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Um, coming up here, this is, yep, as I thought, the barracks. So lots of bunk beds, um, as you can see. And through here, I think, is the locker room. Yep. This is the locker room, so you've just got loads of single chests. Um, through here, if I can lag my way through, because you know, band account recording makes my game run at, at best 11 frames per second. Um, but so you've got four um, four sinks. You also have six toilets. Yeah, six toilets. Um, and then through here you've got the baths so just got a whole bunch of baths here because you know the crews need to be clean and hygienic and they also need a place to sleep so why not just bung them all into the same place um, because you know when it's time for them to sleep then they've got their lockers handy they've also got you know handy sh uh, bathing you know toilet facilities things like that and then this is I think the top floor and this is where you've got security. You also have the reception for the general, whose main office is basically that. So you've got the receptionist office there. You also have the security room here with all of his monitors. Um, he also has a nice seat here. So that's for the security officer. And then coming through here, you've got the general with his big table. Then he's also got a handy map. So this is us. This is where we are right now. We're in the castle. Don't worry about the ghost. Um, with that orange player, with that green player mar marker, don't worry about that. <laughs> but um, so you've got us with the castle, you've got them with their castle. Um, you know, yeah. Just I don't know because he had a castle, so I instantly deemed him as the enemy. I mean, this is a friendly, competitive world. That's why we have the line so that we can see who builds the best stuff for each challenge and yeah so it's all it's all fun and games but i just you know wanted to have an us and them as a sort of battle board why not so you've get then got the general's ensuite toilet that's literally all it is it's just a toilet i forgot to add a sink and then you've also got the other staff's uh toilets so you got two toilets there again should have added a sink but i forgot um and that is the castle pretty much. So we exit here, it's night time, you've got the castle, well that's actually breaking dawn, um, but so you've got the castle here, and that is basically all of my side of the line. All we have left to go over is the spaceship, but then that's an episode in and of itself. So Next time, the only thing left to look at is the spaceship, and I do think I have left the best till last, but for now this is the castle, the ruins, all of the military stuff basically. Um, so yeah, next time we head into the spaceship. So, well, thank you for watching, and goodbye.